What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we talk about Boa's Afraid in this video here today. This will be my spoiler free review for Boa's Afraid. It is directed and written by Ari Aster who has returned with yet another trippy experience of a movie that is visually stunning, confusing, and definitely going to require more than one viewing. Now the film is starring Joaquin Phoenix, Patty, Lup Patty Lupon, or Lupon, Nathan Lane, Amy Ryan, Parker Posey, and Stephen McKinley Henderson. Now, this is revolving around a, I'll just keep it short and simple, a paranoid middle-aged man embarking on the most bizarre journey home after the sudden death of his mother. Bo is afraid is still something I'm processing, very much so. I don't understand everything that I just witnessed, but I know that the third act made me more eager to revisit it to catch everything I initially missed. Because the third act does tie up a lot of loose ends, puts things into perspective, and then ultimately, of course, in true Ari Aster fashion at this point, after seeing three of his movies, now I want to go watch it again because for the most part, the movie is something that keeps your attention the whole entire time, but I know a lot of people are going to be thrown off by how maybe incoherent and messy the story can be at times. This is certainly his most polarizing piece so far. I can see it easily becoming that. Because this one, without question, a lot of it is just it can be it can be viewed and interpreted as what I just said, incoherent and messy. However, the story will slowly come together with each rewatch like most of Astor's past movies have done for me. Exposition dumping is not something I appreciate more than a movie like this that lets you, the audience member, put this puzzle pieces together by providing evidence along the way through means that aren't constant dialogue dumps. I made mention of this in my tweet last night and I still feel that the story is just a little messy and hard to follow, but a second viewing will make things more clear. What is clear is that Ari Aster is able to somehow bring out award-worthy performances from anyone he works with. He did it with Tony Collette, did it with Florence Pugh, now he's doing it with Joaquin Phoenix and Patti LuPone. The entire cast is amazing, but these two are given material that they just devour every time they are on screen together. I'd even go as far to argue that Patti was more compelling than Joaquin, becoming something of an Ari Aster staple at this point. She herself is given a hereditary s dinner table-like monologue that never reaches the heights of what Collette did in that film, but she still was able to to retain my attention with each word that left her mouth during this sequence. Now, despite the writing mishaps, the script's themes about mommy issues, paranoia, parental trauma, toxic parenting, self-discovery, and codependency all shine bright and help keep the story engaging even when the pacing takes a nose nosedive or two. And I might be being generous when I say the pacing only takes a couple nosedives because there's really no reason this movie was over close to being over three hours long. A lot of this could have been trimmed, but yet still, someone like Ari Aster putting on a movie like this is what what happens when you already prove that you are a talented filmmaker and I cannot take that away from Ari Aster he is a very talented filmmaker this overextended and dramatic examination of one man's psychotic collapse though is just filled with mostly nothing but great visuals that showcase how talented again Aster truly is but strong direction doesn't need to overstay its welcome and that's what Bo is afraid feels like it's doing more than once it's overstaying its welcome in more simple words, it's too much of a good thing. More of the positives with this movie come again from Ari Aster's genius behind the camera and his ability to create, to create tension, build the tension, create these anxiety inducing sequences and create awkward interactions that somehow never felt out of place with the film's overall tone. The dark comedy aspects of this movie don't always land and work for me. Some of it was funny. Other moments I just thought were not funny, but most people in my audience, they, they were genuinely laughing at this movie. The bizarre posture from, uh, or what I meant to say was that Joaquin's performance, I think, is great. He portrays awkward so well and makes you uncomfortable just as much as Bo is throughout this wild journey back home. The posture of his facial expressions and his line delivery are all top notch. I'm trying to avoid saying too much about the characters, but Bo is a man that longs for family acceptance companionship and the truth and joaquin just brings all of these things 
from the character's life in a profound way. Scream fans will have something to enjoy here when they see Parker Posey and her brief appearance, which she did an amazing job for the little screen time that she had. Uh, overall, I think this movie is pretty good. It's pretty well made. It's just when you watch it, it's one of those movies. It's one of those movies where I know a lot of people, if you're listening to my review, if you just got done watching it, you're probably going to chime in down below saying that this movie is trash because it was hard to follow. I get that. Maybe the movie, maybe movies like this do need to give a little bit more in terms of making it easier for you to follow along because I know that that's going to be the biggest thing about this movie that turned a lot of people off but from a technical standpoint this movie is very strong a lot of the things that are in this movie make it hard to deny that Ari Aster is one of the best directors working today I do miss the miss the horror stuff that we got from him though initially so I hope he re-enters the horror genre in the future because this was not more horror it was more just bizarre psychedelic drama if you will <laughs> and i enjoyed every bit of it it was just not always that clear as to what what the, the what the hell was happening up until about the third act and things in between leading up to the third act yes you know what is happening with bo you get an understanding of who he is you can relate to bo the characters around him all are somehow interesting despite being very one-dimensional in the case of the fact that we learn enough about them to justify their existence on screen but none of them are able to become as relatable as Bo given that he's he makes up most of the screen time and he's our of course central character but outside of that the movie again gets a little messy but that's where the second viewings will make me appreciate the film a lot more going forward I'm certain of that cinematography outstanding uh I do think that the pacing was hit or miss again there was no reason for the for this movie to be that long thought the score was incredible and again shout out to everybody who participated in this movie every performance was great somehow every performance i saw on my my screen during this experience was great <laughs> another trippy experience from ari aster i want to give this movie a solid seven out of ten and again i am doing that most because the story i feel was a little too incoherent at times but it might grow on me and my rating could age to grow even higher with each new viewing let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video